Miss Maisie and today I'm going to show you how to make a perfect cup of February tea by making your own tea bag. Let's get started. For this craft you'll need two coffee filters, a pair of scissors, a pencil, an embroidery needle, a, about a yard of embroidery floss, and some loose leaf tea. Today we're using a raspberry tea just because I think it's tasty and also it feels like a good one for a heart because it's kind of a pink colored tea. First things first, you're going to take your two um, coffee filters. You're going to lay them on top of each other because we're going to draw our basic shape. Now, you can trace a heart if you want or you can freehand draw one. I'm personally going to freehand draw one because I feel pretty comfortable with it. It's a pretty simple shape. You're going to want to make sure your heart has plenty of space because that's how much space you'll have to put tea in your tea bag. Now, we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut a rough square around the sides of our heart so we don't have a lot of excess material we're trying to kind of keep in the picture while we sew. It doesn't have to be by any means a good square. Mine's definitely more of a rhombus than a square. The point is just to get it cut out so you're not crowding the lines of your heart. And then you can take this and you can put it to the side. You can even throw it out. We won't come back to that particular bit. Now you have your basic pattern. The next thing we're going to do is grab our embroidery thread. You'll need, again, about a yard of this. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is actually divide it in two. So if you can see, it kind of pulls apart into different threads. And what we're going to do is pull it apart. So there's about three threads on each side. You can count one, two, three, one, two, three. You're going to pull the thread apart. This both gives you extra thread to work with and means you're not going to work with such a thick line of thread because you don't really need one. I recommend when pulling it apart that you kind of keep both sides in each hand and then pull the tail down as you pull them apart to keep them from tangling. You can see it kind of wants to roll up is why you want to keep that tail held in the center as you pull it apart. This will leave you with two separate strands of string. We're going to put one of them aside for now and then you've got your thread. The next thing we're going to do is thread our needle. Um, this can be a little tricky. The thing I recommend if you're really stuck is you can always dampen your fingertips to help you keep that thread steady, or you can even dampen the end of the thread. See, so now it's a little damp, so it sticks together a little more easily. And you just pull it through. I recommend pulling it so you have this long end, and then this, the end that goes through the needle is still gonna go about halfway down on that long end, just so it doesn't slip out of the needle. So in terms of making a knot at the end of your thread, which is kind of how the thread stays in place while you're sewing, I recommend taking two fingers. You'll take the thread and wrap it around your finger once, wrap it around your finger twice, and then using your thumb, you're going, and you can even use other fingers, you're going to roll it off your finger, and then you're going to Pull that rolled bit tight, and now you have a knot at the end of your string. Now that your string is knotted, you've got your pattern drawn, your thread is on the needle, we're going to take this and we're going to make our first stitch. So to do that, we're actually going to come in from the bottom. It's easy to kind of line up. You can even see the pattern kind of shines through to the other side. You're going to point, put it at the bottom of the point of your heart. You can see it pierces through right there. And you're going to pull it up straight through. 
So our first stitch is going to be kind of a standard sewing stitch. We're just going to take this about, about a centimeter out. You're gonna line it up with your drawing and you're just going to push your needle through and pull the thread so it's tight. You can see, and you've got just a little stitch right there. Now we're going to do what's called a back stitch. To do a back stitch, you're gonna come up through the bottom. Again, you can see where it shines through. Again, about a centimeter out, and it pierce through. Pull the thread up. And then instead of kind of keeping going, oh, we'll make a stitch here, we're actually going to go back to that, around that hole where we pulled our thread through this first stitch and we're going to push the needle back through there and pull it straight down. Again, you're gonna come up about a centimeter through. Go back to where your last stitch ended, push your needle through, pull it tight. You've got a nice little stitch going. And we're gonna keep doing that until we've covered about half the heart. Once you get to the humps of the heart, those rounded bits, I think it becomes a little intimidating. I know the first time I made one of these, I got nervous, but the nice thing is we do have that guiding line. If you think that it's not necessarily coming through clearly that you're making a heart, you can always make the stitches in this section a little bit smaller, a little bit closer together, because the more stitches you have, the closer to a rounded shape it will be. So you can see these ones are a little bit tinier. One of the nice things is with this back stitch, it creates a nice tight seam, so you don't have to worry as much about all your stitches being the same exact size, because it's creating already that tighter seam. Once you've got about half your heart sewn, now we're going to actually grab our tee. I have my tee in a plastic bag, which makes it a little easier to manage. You can also use a spoon for this part, which also makes it very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to open up the little pocket we've sewn, and then we're going to pour our tea inside. You're going to want to pull up your tea bag so when you press the sides to get together, you see that there's still a little bit of extra room because you don't want it to be so tight that you can't keep sewing it. But this looks about right. You can see I've got my tea in there. And when you press it flat, you can even see where it's kind of coming through. And then you're going to take your needle and we're gonna finish sewing with that same technique we were using before. Let's say you're running low on thread. It looks like it's just not, not quite enough thread to make it to the end. Don't worry, that's why we have our second part of our thread that we pulled off. We're going to finish off this thread. So we're going to go through one of those loops in the back with our needle. That should leave another little loop here. We're going to take our thread or our needle and go through that little loop of thread we just formed. And we're going to pull it tight. And I personally like to do this twice just to make sure I have it tied off correctly. Again, you'll go through one of those loops. That should create a new little loop. You can even back your needle through it, pull it tight, and then you're going to trim the excess. You don't wanna trim it too close. I would say leave at least a centimeter left of your thread, just trim it off. Then we're going to take our new thread. We're gonna do the same thing we did earlier. We're going to thread it through. We're going to take the very end, roll it between our fingers, roll it off, pull it tight, and then what I recommend is you're going to go up through the hole you made of your most recent stitch, follow it back over, 
And then you're gonna go back to the way you were stitching before. Here are the last few stitches. We're gonna do exactly the same stitch we've been doing. Pull through, fall back, until we reach the very end. This is gonna be my last stitch on here. I'm gonna go through the hole I made when I came in with my very first stitch. I'm gonna come back to the hole I had just made, pull through. And then I personally like to take it through that hole one more time up top and then back through the very first stitch we made just to make sure the end is nice and tight and finished up. Then we're gonna flip over to the back of our piece. We're gonna finish it off. So we're gonna pull through one of the stitches we made till we leave a little loop. We're gonna take our needle through that little loop. And then I like to take it through the big loop that's formed there. And we pull it down tight. One of the last things we're going to do is grab our scissors. You wanna leave at least a centimeter of space outside of your stitching. You don't wanna to get too close, but we're gonna cut around that general shape of a heart. Again, you wanna leave some space there because you don't want to you know, accidentally cut one of your threads you just carefully sewed. You don't want to accidentally cause an issue where you're going to have your tea cup full of tea, you know, loose tea leaves because it has fallen apart. So we're going to cut just like this all the way to the end. Now we have our tea bag. Once you have your tea bag and you're ready to drink your tea, you're gonna grab your hot cup of water and you're going to just plop your tea bag right in there, let it soak all the way through, and then you'll need to let it steep. You'll want to let your tea steep for about five minutes since this is an herbal tea, three to five minutes. Um, you'll notice as it steeps, the water itself will get darker as it kind of proliferates with the tea. You may even need to dunk it a few times, just push it down with the spoon. This is also um, a great time to start deciding what you're gonna do while you drink your tea. I recommend checking out our database, Creative Bug. Creative Bug is nice because it gives you tutorials on all sorts of crafty things, including a couple really fun ones based around things like tea. So if you've decided now that you've made your own tea bag, you're going to make yourself all sorts of tea cakes and cute little plates to put your teacup down on. They have all sorts of tutorials for things like that. You can use Creative Bug free by going to our data, the database part of our website and it's super fun and easy to use. Once you've let your tea steep, this is when you can add anything you want to sweeten your tea, to change the flavor a little. I personally really like adding just a little touch of honey in with my raspberry tea, because I think it's, it's not quite as sweet as sugar would be. And then you can just sip and enjoy. Thank you so much for joining me today for this craft, and I hope you join us again for another craft soon. Thanks.